we're joined by the school's minister, uh, Nick Gibb, this morning. Uh, a very good morning to you, Minister. Um, and it's, you know, it is a lovely moment, isn't it, when you hear young people feeling proud of themselves, uh, and rightly so this morning. Of course, lots of questions still uh, about how these grades will be viewed by sixth form colleges and yesterday by the A levels, by universities. What are your immediate concerns, uh, essentially, uh, about how to rebalance things, say, you know, these have been teacher assessments. Are exams going to come back at some point, do you think? Uh, and if so, will that have an effect on the kind of grades next year's pupils have compared to this year's? Yes, well, exams will come back in 2022. We've already said that. We've said the, the kind of adjustments that we'll make to those exams uh, next year to make sure that they're fair, given the disruption that uh, this year's uh, group, uh, year group will have suffered as well. Uh, but it, it was wonderful to see those students from Aylesbury Vale Academy uh, open their GCSE results. And that's happening all over the country. Hundreds of thousands of young people receiving uh, they grace today, and we should be congratulating them all for their achievements, uh, which are remarkable given the, the very serious disruption that they will have faced over the last 18 months. And it's also the culmination of 11 years of schoolwork that they are uh, being rewarded for today. So congratulations to them all, and thank you to the teachers who have administered the teacher assessed grade system this year, making sure that young people can go on to the next stage of their education, whether that's A-levels or T-levels or an apprenticeship, uh, notwithstanding the fact that we have had to cancel exams, because I think to have held exams this year, given the different levels of disruption across the country and within schools that students have faced, it wouldn't have been fair to set exams with the same tests, the same questions on the curriculum, despite the fact that they will have been taught different parts of the curriculum all over the country. So thank you to the teachers for what they've achieved today as well. No, indeed. Uh, uh, and uh, it wouldn't have been fair. I think what people are concerned about is that this still wasn't fair because there's so much disparity. There was so much confusion, uh, changing of minds about how to make this year work, that actually there's the huge disparities about how schools even did their assessing of, of pupils. Some, some students did lots and lots and lots of assessments all the way through. Some just did one. Uh, and actually, the results they've got are not a fair reflection of how they should have been placed across the country. And, of course, there's still huge disparity between the results of private schools and the results of state schools. Um, are you concerned, uh, as with the A-levels, about what this will mean for them going forward? Well, actually, uh, despite the fact we gave a lot of discretion to teachers about what evidence that they could use to back up their grades, they, they, this, has had, this has been a very thorough process. Uh, and there's a lot of guidance to teachers about the standards that they're looking at, about how to go about assessing grades. Uh, and there's a, there's a three stages of quality assurance to ensure consistency. So I think at the end of that process, I think we can be assured that these grades are a valid reflection of the work and achievements of young people. And that is the view right across the sector. If you talk to some of the union leaders, they will tell you the same thing. Um, in terms of um, the, the independent sector, well, you know, they are selective, uh, academically selective schools. They've always had a higher proportion of those top grades, even in a normal year. And what we've seen this year, actually, if you look at the relative change between this year and last year, uh, the percentage increase in um, independent schools is about 15 per cent, in comprehensives it's about 18 per cent. So young people, whatever school they have attended, if they've been targeting those top grades, are achieving those top grades regardless of which school they go to. So we can have confidence in okay. this system. But of course, the best system uh, is an examination system, and we'll, well, we'll, we'll be returning to that in 2022. Well, that's clear that we're returning to exams. Thank you for that. When, when I spoke to Gavin Williamson on this programme earlier in the week, um, I uh, said to him that from my experience, and after the interview, schools contacted me directly to say this was the case. They are not clear about what is happening from September for those sitting their GCSEs next summer and those sitting their A-levels next summer. They're not clear. And uh, Mr Williamson said that he had 
extensively been talking to schools, that you were in a process of feeding back how to make the adjustments for the impact mm -hmm. on youngsters last year, and that that had been done in consultation with schools, but they are not clear, and we're a couple of weeks away of exactly how to manage a very difficult year again next year. Well, we published in July uh, a consultation document setting out in detail the kind of adjustments that we're going to make to the exams in 2022. So things like option, more optionality in some subjects, more advanced notice of the topic areas of the questions in other subjects, some, some exam aids in mathematics and so on, the formula, just to make it fairer for, for this, this particular year group, the current year 10s and the current year 12s, who have suffered a lot of disruption to their education. So, so those, th those, that, those, that information is out there. What we haven't announced yet is the grading standard, and we want to make sure that we treat the 2022 cohort fairly compared to other year groups this year, last year, and, of course, in, in the future as well. There's going to be an urge to mark them down, though, isn't there? Well, that's a matter for Ofqual. Uh, they are the regulator who determine the grading standard, and they will be saying more about that in the in the autumn term. And we're talking to them ab about that. Then there's the longer term issue about how we get back to the the system we had prior to the pandemic, where we didn't see the variation in the grades from one year to the next. And we do want to get back to that very effective system that we had. And do you believe that uh, Gavin Williamson will still be in his job? There's lots of talk about um, the fact that, you know, he, he's basically on his way out in the next reshuffle. Well, this is speculation in the press. The media love this kind of thing. I expect Gavin Williamson to be in his job for a long time. He's a very effective leader of the department. He's been absolutely determined that during the pandemic, no young person will suffer long-term a damage to their prospects as a consequence of the Although disruption. You had your, I'm sorry, you had your education recovery czar resign. Kevin Collins resigned because he said it was half-hearted. So I think that, you know, he would disagree with that, as would many in the industry. Well, we've taken a lot of the advice that Kevin Collins gave about COVID recovery in terms of the tutoring. We're putting billion, uh, three billion pounds of money into, co into uh, education recovery. 100 million hours of one-to-one -one and small group tuition over the next three years to make sure that every young person who's been affected by the pandemic will be able to recover their education. That is a determination of the department. Well, thank you very much for joining us on the programme this morning, Schools Minister Nick Gibb.